So this is Friday, November 4th. Uh, go into the information up there. Your book choice. Oh, I didn't forget to mention. If you want to change your book by Monday, I will let you do it and not charge you points. Uh, as long as you have a book written down, if you end up reading it more this weekend and realizing you don't like it and you come in with a new book come Monday, that's fine with me. Um, if not, then you should have your book chosen. The hero shirt, you had to have the money today, you're kind of out of luck. Charity shoe drive will go to me for about a week and a half. It is three points per pair of shoes, any size, any kind, um, up to a maximum of 15 points. And then our tie game was famous paintings and art. And then we'll go through here. Uh, go ahead and close your notebook for a moment. Let's just make sure it's in, I mean, it should be in your brain. This is what we see coming up on Monday over this information. And figure out to make sure it's there. Yeah. Surprise! You twist it up on Monday. The first god to get a throne was? Zeus! The first one he, get, he gives a throne to is? Don't start talking until I ask the question. Why does he give her the next throne? Because What do we say for her? Queen of all The next one to get a throne? What do we say for him? Never go near water. Uh, well done. The next one to get a throne is? And why is he not up here? Because he talk to people. So the next one to get a throne and keep it? And what do we say? That is very true. Our next one to get a throne. Hestia. Why is Hestia not listed? And we're going to get to that. Well, fingers crossed. We're going to get to that part of the story today. That's what my other class did not get to. We're going to hope we're going to get to her part. She deleted them. The next one to get a throne and keep it. And his brother is. Hephaestus is the only god that is. Who crippled him? On the island, what does he find? <laughs> and what do they train him to do? <laughs> well done. Bang on something. God is metal. This is the God of War. But what do we know about him as a God of War? He's a He's a Lucy. So him being the God of War and the Lucy of Sims. Remember, you want to protect your neck, protect your face, protect all the squishiness, and then you're good to go. Then Zeus does not want to be friendly with his wife, so he goes out and is friends with a titan girl by the name of Leto, but she thinks it's all creepy and throws a hand in his face. So who, uh, what form does he take to trick her? Swan! He becomes a swan to trick her, and then she becomes pregnant. Did we get to what Hera does when she finds out? Giant python chases after her, and eventually she gets upset. Did we get to how she stops this from happening? No. So Zeus does decide to help her, and he sends a message down to her. She's running along on Earth after a while. He says, hey, here's how the plan's going to work. What I'm going to do is there's a cliff overlooking this island. I'm going to have you run to the edge of the cliff, jump onto this island that's out there in the middle of the water. She's like, that's not going to work because the island is still connected to the ground. So the island, even though it's in the water, is part of your kingdom. He goes, duh, everybody knows that. But what I'm going to do is have my brother break the stream that connects the island to the ground. Because everyone knows islands are just giant land bobbers connected by a land stream to the ground. That's common knowledge. And Zeus goes, my brother will break it, thus separating the island from the ground, thus freeing you from the curse. She goes, okay, sounds like a good idea. Turns out, by the way, that you can Google pregnant woman running, and there's a picture. Uh, and so that is my pregnant woman who is running, and so as she runs, I tried to Google uh, snake running, and that did not work out as well. Uh, so this is probably a snake wearing a sombrero. Uh, and so the snake is chasing after her. She gets over to this cliff, 
dives onto it, whee, and the snake follows behind, but right before the snake can make the jump, Poseidon jumps up, does his little wiggle dance, dance. <laughs> separating that thing, so now it is no longer connected, and she's free. As soon as the curse is broken, the snake can no longer follow after her. She turns around and sees the snake looking confused. She takes a deep breath and she's like, oh, thank you. Ah, it gives birth to two full-grown people that pop out of her because she's been pregnant for years. She's like, ah, pop, ah, pop, and out come this boy and this girl by the names of Artemis and Apollo. Artemis and Apollo are not happy. They've spent their entire childhood and young adult lives in their mommy's tummy. So when they pop out, they're like, we've got some anger issues. We're like, well, how's that different than any other teenager? And so they decide they're going to take revenge on this python snake. They start skimpering and scouring through the woods, finding all of these sticks, and they start making bows and arrows in order to shoot the snake. Uh, Mr. Proviac, I understand the sticks for the arrows and the bow, but where do they get the string? They're on belt cords. And so the idea is that they pulled it off, like, popped it off, and then strung it up there, and then they start shooting the snake and kill it dead. Hera sees all of this happen, and Hera actually feels bad. She's like, oh, I kind of feel bad. Not for Leto. She's like, that girl had it coming. I'm like her anyway. But she does feel bad towards Artemis and Apollo. She's like, you know what? You spent your entire childhood trapped inside of your parents' belly. I know exactly how that feels. Because where did Hera spend her childhood? In um, Kronos. Ah, in Kronos' belly. So she decides to forgive Artemis and Apollo. Not only does she forgive them, she brings them up to Mount Olympus. She says, you know what? We have empty thrones. They deserve thrones up here because they suffered just like I did. And Zeus goes, what about their mom? And Hera's like, I hate her. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess she's not coming up. So Leto does not get to come up to Mount Olympus, but Artemis and Apollo do. With those two coming up to Mount Olympus, because they use the bow and arrow to kill Python, the bow and arrow becomes part of what they are the god of. But also, they were twins. Because they were twins, they represent something else that was thought to be twins, too. Which is... The sun and the moon! So every time you see their pictures, you have the sun and the moon, and you have the arrows up there. Same thing over yonder, you have the sun and the moon, and the arrows that are up there, over here sun and the moon, and the arrows, and, arrow. and so they represent the sun and the moon. Well, Artemis uses her bow and arrow for hunting. So she actually becomes the god of hunting. If you were a werewolf, you would pray to her, god of the moon. If you're going to go out and hunt yourself a chipmunk for dinner, you would pray to her, god of hunting. So Artemis was the god of moon and hunting, are the two main areas she controls. So we do the moon one. I, I wish. <laughs> Instead, I figure almost every story we see her in, she's out hunting. So I figure we'd focus on the hunting part of it. And so, so you should never pick up a bow and arrow. But yes, you're going to you're gonna channel your inner Katniss and pull back the string of a bow. Do you realize there's a difference between I am hunting and I am at the gym? direction when you pull back. Apollo does have a bow and arrow. But he does not really use his very much. He goes a different direction. He focuses more on being the god of the sun. Being god of the moon, not much you can do. Being god of the sun, there is. He drives the sun chariot across the sky. It was thought to be a giant burning chariot. And he would drive it from one mountain to the other. That's part of what he's the god of. And that took up a lot of his time. The other thing he becomes the god of is hot dudes. Because he was the hottest guy to ever exist. Because of that, yeah. chicks started yeah. digging him. So he decides to become the god of things chicks dig. If a chick likes it, he's the god of it. The chicks dig music, he becomes the god of music. Chicks dig poetry, he becomes the god of poetry. Chicks dig rippling abs, he becomes the god of rippling abs. What? Anything that girls like, he's like, yeah, girls like that, yeah, I'm the god of that. Girls like that, yeah, I'm the god of that one too. He's like, I'll dig it. So he becomes the god of... The sun and hotties. <laughs> because he was the most attractive god. I thought Ares was attractive. Ares was attractive, but even he couldn't hold a candle to Apollo. And so because of that, Apollo is that much better. The hand sign will do for Apollo because I figure, well, anytime you're outside and the sun is on you, or if you see that special hot boy, 
Well, apparently you guys see my boys are. Apparently I kind of know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, that's what I do. I'm so hot, guys. I just walk down the hallway, and myself nonstop. stop. Explains a lot. So Artemis and Apollo are now born, and they have thrones. For our next one to get a throne, this goes back in time to Kronos overthrowing his dad. Yeah. And every time that Kronos jumped up and chopped into Artemis, Artemis chopped into Uranus, what would happen? Chunks fell out. One of these chunks fell and hit the ocean. And when it hit the ocean, it turned into a titan. When it hit the ocean, turning into a titan, it floated out there. And this titan lived on the ocean for years, and no one knew she was out there. She just did her little floaty thing out there. Eventually, Kronos gets overthrown. She's still floating. Zeus takes over. She's still floating. All these gods get thrones. She's still out there floating. So one day, she goes from the ocean to land. And as soon as her foot hits land... Another god knows of her existence because she changes kingdoms. What kingdom was she in? Poseidon. 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 What kingdom does she go to? Zeus. And as soon as she goes into Zeus's kingdom, he knows that she's alive. The reason he knows she's alive is because she is the hottest girl to ever exist. And this is? Aphrodite. Aphrodite. And Zeus, sitting up on Mount Olympus, all of a sudden is like, hey, what do you think we should be doing for dinner? There's a hot girl somewhere. I'll be back. <laughs> it takes off running. Runs all the way down to the beach. But the problem is, she's hotter than anything he's ever seen before. So much to the point that he has trouble talking to her. He's like, hey, how you doing? Uh, when he tries to talk, he's like, I just started drooling. And so she's like, oh, you're kind of creepy. And he's like, how you doing? But with him having trouble talking to her, he's like, um, I can't. Uh, be friendly with you because I keep getting in trouble with my wife. She's like, that's creepy. He's like, but I really like staring at you all the time. She goes, mm -hmm. more creepy. He's like, how about you come back to my place and I have these thrones and you can sit on one of my thrones and have power and I'll stare at you all the time. She's like, oh, that's a hat trick of creepy. He's like, is that a no? She's like, no, nah, I'll come back with you. And so she comes back to Mount Olympus and he gives her a throne on Mount Olympus. <laughs> But the problem is, when she gets a throne on Mount Olympus, all work stops. Because all the dude gods spend all their time staring at her. And just going, ah, hey. And all the girls spend their time staring at her, going, I'm going to stab you in the head so far. <laughs> and all of a sudden, everything stops. And just like, well, this isn't working. Everyone either wants to date you or kill you. Uh, so we're going to have to change things a little bit. He goes, all right, Aphrodite, we're going to have to get you married. Because if you're married, that'll solve the problem of everyone trying to date you. She goes, okay, uh, who should I marry? He's like, that's adorable. You think you get to choose. Uh, he's like, I'm going to pick your husband for you. She's like, oh, who is he? He's like, well, it's someone from this room. She goes, oh, is it you? He's like, what, me? No, I've already married. That would be ridiculous. Wink. He's like, oh, that was weird. He's like, oh, do I get to marry the guy in the back who looks like he's in swimming trunks juggling fish? He's like, nope, he was dead already, you were already in his kingdom, and he lost his chance. He's like, oh, ooh, the guy who's over there in the dark clothing playing guitar looking all depressed? Nope, he doesn't like people. He's like, oh. Ooh, how about the guy that's over there? Did he just stub his toe and start crying? He's like, yep, you can't marry him. He has issues. He's like, ooh, that good-looking guy who's all smiley playing with his bone. He's like, nope, you don't get to marry him. She's like, Seriously, dude, I'm running out of options here. The only thing left is, like, the crippled guy in the corner, and there's no... Why are you smiling? He's like... <laughs> <laughs> Who does she get to marry? <laughs> this becomes Zeus's way of apologizing to Hephaestus. He's like, hey, remember when I threw you out of a window and crippled you for life? And Hephaestus is like, kind of hard to forget. <laughs> well, you get to marry the hottest girl to ever exist. Hephaestus goes... I forgive you. <laughs> you can throw me out the window whenever you want. And so Hephaestus and Aphrodite get married. The problem is Aphrodite's not too excited about this. She's like, mm, do you see this? Do you see that? <laughs> so she decides to celebrate her marriage by getting a boyfriend. And not only does she get a boyfriend, she picks one that she knows will irritate her husband. Because there's one man that he hates hey. most in the world. Oh. Ares, his own brother. So she immediately starts dating Ares just to make Hephaestus upset. 
which is why I did the posters the way I did to help remind you. Those are the two brothers, Hephaestus and Ares. Separating them is Aphrodite in the middle. But So I put those higher and closer because they're the actual married ones, but those are the dating ones. And then same thing over here on this poster. That's why they set it up. Hephaestus is married to her who is giving him the cold shoulder while staring lovingly into the eyes of Ares. By the way, the one that's behind him over here looking all caring and nice, the only god that was nice on Mount Olympus, Hestia. So that's Hestia back there going like, oh, they're just horrible people. Because Aphrodite was definitely horrible people. But I thought she was really pretty. She was really pretty. She was the most beautiful person to ever exist. I thought she was the god of love. She was the god of love because she loved herself. Aphrodite was the god of love and beauty. But she was not a good person. Her and Ares got along really well because they were both horrible and nasty and rotten on the inside and all kinds of adorable on the outside. So they made a wonderful pair. The hand sign, well, you're going to take your hand and do the half circle coming down and then the other half circle pointing down and you bring your two half circles together and you go, I'm a care bear. And you make your little, little thing that shoots out. Yeah, you or, shouldn't do a half circle. I got a full circle. You're a special child. <laughs> uh, you can also, I've had kids do like the special game sign where you throw the little heart that way and that works too. I've had the kids like, I'm, whatever your particular gang sign works that you want to throw on the street, that's fine with me. I'm the 92nd Street heartthrob. Whatever works for me. You'll make your, create the heart with the hands. What are you doing? Did not know it was going to come back challenging. After her, Aphrodite has her throne. The next one is one we've already talked about, but she's just now getting her spot. Because she spent all of this time living inside her father's head. And now she finally gets to be born. And that's where Athena comes in. Athena finally gets to be born and to pop into the world. And because she's born from Zeus's brain, she becomes the god of wisdom, wisdom and war. Wisdom is the main one. That's the one that we'll focus on. And with her being the god of wisdom, we're going to point to the place that she was born from. The brain. The brain bits. So the stuff right up there, born from the brain. At this time, Zeus has now filled in 11 of his thrones. What? Mr. Brogan, yeah. there's only 10 up there. Yeah. Yeah. Because who also has a throne? Yeah. He's still up there. And Zeus is now done being friendly with Titans. He's like, that's not working so well, so I'm going to have to be more creative. And he is. So this time he decides to go out and be friendly with a nymph. Uh, the nymphs were like the elves. There was the wood nymphs and the sea nymphs and the lava nymphs. And so they had these little elves that were out there. So he goes down and finds this nymph by the name of Maya. M-A-I-A. And he comes down and is like, hey, my name is Zeus. And she's like, I don't care, I'm a nymph. He's like, okay. And so he and Maya hang out for a while and friendliness happens. And once the friendliness happens, she gets pregnant. But the problem is, nymphs don't work like normal creatures. Nymphs are special creatures. The day she gets pregnant, she's like, um, I'm pregnant. He's like, ooh, um, we should probably hide you away because I think my wife's probably going to try to kill you. She's like, that's not good. He goes, I agree. So you go hide yourself in a cave, and I'll come back for you in a couple days, and we'll figure something out. Maya goes and runs to a cave to hide on the side of a mountain. That day she finds out she's pregnant, she gives birth to the baby. Nymphs are special. She's like, I'm pregnant. Nope, not anymore. Oh, look, there's a baby. And this little baby pops out. This baby apparently not only was born quickly, but spends his life doing everything quickly. Because as soon as he's born, he's like, I'm out, wind sprints, <laughs> and starts running back and forth across the cave, running around in little circles. He's like, you're a hyperactive little buddy, aren't you? He's like, yes, I am. And this little baby is? Hermes. Little baby Hermes is born. Well, poor Maya is worn out, and she decides to take a nap. She's like, I've had a busy day. <laughs> Falls asleep. Baby Hermes does the same thing every small child does the day he's born, decides to go for a walk in the woods by himself. He's like, I'm going to take off and go for a walk. So he pulls up his little diaper and out he goes, out wandering through the woods. As he wanders through the woods, he finds this clearing out there, and in the middle of the clearing are a bunch of glowing cows. He's like, ooh, a bunch of glowing cows. I'm going to take those. And he decides to take the glowing cows for himself. He goes and smacks them in their little glowing cow tushies. Smack! and brings them all back up to the cave. When they get to the cave, he's like, shh, glow his moo-moos. I'm like, moo, he's like, quiet, moo. 
and up they go into the back area of the cave, and then pushes them all into the little back cave area and hides them. And then it's like, oh, I better thank the gods for making me uh, get these cows in the first place for being born. So he decides to sacrifice one. He grabs one of the moo moos, brings it out to the front of the cave, pulls out his giant dagger that every baby carries with him. And he's like, moo moo, I'm going to have to sacrifice you to the gods for thank you for making me exist. And the cow's like, moo, 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 And then pulls out the guts, offers them up to Zeus, throws them to the side. He's like, I've had a busy day. And falls asleep, lays down. Later that morning, Apollo shows up into the woods. He's like, where are my magic cows? And this was the sacred herd of cows from Apollo. Shows up, no cows. He's like, oh, I know, I left them plugged in. And he keeps searching all throughout the woods trying to find them, and eventually tracks them down to this cave. Gets into the cave, sees a big pile of cow gut. He's like, someone killed one of my cows. He's like, ooh, there's a woman laying there and a baby. So he starts yelling at the lady on the ground. He's like, why would you kill my cows? She wakes up. She's like, who are you? He's like, I'm Apollo. She's like, I'm Maya. He's like, I don't care who you are. And they start yelling back and forth. Wakes up the little baby. Hermes wakes up. He's like, oh, yelling, 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 bored. And starts wandering around the little cave. As they're yelling, he finds an old turtle shell in the back of the cave. Picks up the turtle shell starts whacking on it. Whack it, whack it, whack it, whack it, whack it. He's like, ooh, whack, whack, whack. Pulls out his knife that all babies carry. And starts poking holes around the turtle shell. Thwack, thwack, Pokes holes all around the outside of it. Goes over to the pile of cow guts. Pulls out one of the intestines. And then strings it back and forth across all the holes, pulls it tight, ties it off, and then starts strumming on it. Bing, ding, 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 ding. And it starts distracting himself doing that. <laughs> Apollo, in the middle of yelling at Maya, is like, what is wrong with you, lady? How could you kill? What What are you doing? And he gets like, bling, playing around the turtle shell. <laughs> Apollo looks at him, he's like, you know what? I bet chicks would dig that because chicks dig music and I like things that chicks dig. He goes, kid, how about you give that to me? And Hermes goes, no. Apollo <laughs> goes, yes. And Hermes goes, how about I trade it to you? Apollo goes, okay, what do you want? Hermes goes, I'll take your glowing cows. Apollo goes, well, I don't have my glowing cows. That's the problem. Hermes goes, if you had your glowing cows, would you trade them to me for this thing that you could use to mack on all the ladies? Apollo goes, yeah, sure. If I had my cows, I'd happily trade them to you. Hermes goes, okay, your cows are over there. Apollo's like, oh! <laughs> he, realizes he got tricked. And then Hermes throws him the turtle shells, like, thank you for my cows, and goes over there and just runs around with the cows. But Apollo's actually pretty happy. He's like, oh, you're a sneaky little lad, aren't you? But, bling, chicks are going to dig it. And they do. Which becomes his thing that he uses all the time. Almost every picture of Apollo, he's got that little lyre, which was called L-Y-R-E, becomes a guitar later on. Liar. But it's, don't you call me a liar? It's right up there, sometimes pronounced liar or leer. And so it's, there's different versions of it. It's a stringed instrument, and he starts playing it. Goes back up to Mount Olympus, walking along on Mount Olympus, just sort of strumming away. Bling, bling, when Zeus sees him. And Zeus goes, hey, what's that? I was like, it's my new musical instrument the chicks are going to dig. Where'd you get it? He's like, oh, I got it from a baby. You stole that from a baby? He's like, no, I didn't steal it from a baby. I traded it with a baby. He's like, what did you trade to get it? He's like, oh, herd of magic cows. She's like, you traded a herd of magic cows for a turtle shell and guts. He's like, uh, well, when you say it that way, it sounds bad. She's like, that's a pretty impressive baby. So Zeus decides to go meet this baby for himself. Goes out to the cave, walks into it, and sees Maya. He's like, hey, you and I, uh, yesterday? She's like, oh. He's like, who's that teenager with you? He's like, that's your son. He's like, what? Turns out Hermes grows quickly. Zeus goes, did you steal a bunch of cows from my son? Hermes like, I did. He's like, did you trade him the cows? And he got like a little turtle shell? Hermes goes, I did. He's like, I'm impressed. Zeus decides to bring Hermes up to Mount Olympus. The problem is, Hermes can't sit still the entire time he's there. So Zeus goes, you know what? We need to burn off some of your energy. So he gives him a job. And that job is... Messenger. And that's how Hermes becomes the messenger of the gods. To help burn off the energy from all of this. And because he was all lying and sneaky and stealing, he becomes the god of thieves and liars. The hand sign for him? Well, pretty much every time we see him, he's doing the same thing. Which is running. It's he's a flash. <laughs> and so you're going to be running in place. 
Now, Zeus has filled in all of the thrones on Mount Olympus. Well, then the nice one gets in. Years go by with these 11 and Hestia as your main Olympians. Then, Zeus decides to have the new race of humans created. And the new race of humans come in. The problem is, this new race of humans are not allowed to see gods in their true form. It was believed because the gods were such magnificent creatures that any time they came down to us, or any time humans saw them, they had to take a human-friendly form. Whether they were super big or human-sized, the gods took a different form. So we never saw them in their true form. If we saw them in their true form, it would kill us. We would just be like, ah, it's so beautiful, that, and our brains would explode. So they always had to take a different form. Well, one day, Zeus decides to take a different form. He's like, you know what? Never been friendly with a human before. So he decides to come oh down God. and be friendly with... You're surprised he makes poor choices. And he comes <laughs> down and decides to be friendly with a human girl. Finds a girl by the name of Semele. Like, simile, but all ease. And comes down and sees this girl named Semele. And he does his classic Zeus. Oh, I'm Zeus. And she's like, oh, I'm Semele. He's like, oh, I've got a beard, so you know it's me. And she's like, okay. And so friendliness happens. Time passes. She gets pregnant. Once she's pregnant, Zeus is like, oh, that was not a good choice after all. I did it again. And so he's like, all right, uh, listen, girl, um, bad news is you weren't sure about this. Girls have found out in the past. My wife's probably going to try and kill you. She's like, what? He's like, so you probably shouldn't tell anyone about me because if you do, things aren't going to go well. So how about this whole me being the father of your baby thing? We keep that a secret on the down low. And she's like, oh, okay, I'll do my best. He's like, good idea. And Zeus is like, all right, I'll be back in a couple months to check on you. Till then, shh, mum's the word. Months go by, Zeus does not show back up. She gets pregnant and pregnant her. She gets tired of everyone asking. People come by and they're like, hey, who's the father? She's like, I can't tell you. They're like, uh-huh. And eventually she breaks down. One of her friends asks, like, come on, who's the dad? She's like, all right, between you and me, you can't tell anyone but the father of the baby Zeus. Like, oh, really? She's like, really? That's the best secret ever. She's like, I know, isn't it? I should tell more people. So she decides, I'm going to tell more people. So then every time someone asks, she's like, oh, yeah, that, Zeus is the father. To the point where every time someone comes by, hi, yeah, baby, yeah, Zeus is the baby daddy. Like, yeah, oh, hi, yeah, Zeus is the father. It's so, okay. yeah, you know, you're one in directions, that's fine. And so it got to the point where every person she met, she was yelling out, Zeus is the father of my baby. Naturally, this gets back to Hera. Who doesn't take it well? So Hera goes, you know, I'm tired of killing women that my uh, husband has been friendly with. Um, I'm going to make Zeus kill her instead. So she decides to make Zeus kill this girl. So she goes down and takes the human form of an old lady and wanders into the town where Semele is hid. And she gets there, does a little wandering around, finds Semele, she's like, hey, lady, uh, are you pregnant? Someone's like, hey, random old lady I just met. Would you like to know who the father is? Yes, it's Zeus. Zeus is the father. Someone, and Hera goes, oh, how nice about that. She goes, wait, how do you know Zeus is the father? Someone goes, well, he had a beard, and he goes, I'm Zeus. So Zeus is the father. Hera goes, well, how do you know it's just not some random person lying to you about being Zeus? Someone goes, I, I don't know. I guess I just trusted him. Hera goes, you should not do that. You need to make him prove it to you. Somebody goes, ooh, that's a good idea. How do I make him prove it to me? Hera goes, hmm, I don't know. I have it. Somebody goes, what is it? Hera goes, next time he comes by, if he really is Zeus, have him show you his true form. And somebody goes, no, crazy old lady, I can't do that because it would kill me. Hera goes, no, it won't. That's a rumor. I goes, it is? I goes, yeah. The real thing is, if you see a god's true form, they have to marry you and take you up to Mount Olympus, and you get to become a god and live with them. So that's why no one's ever seen a god's true form. I know it. It happened to my sister. Somebody's like, it did? She's like, yeah, it, it did. Somebody's like, oh. So the next time he shows up, Harry goes, yeah, make him show you his true form. If he doesn't show you his true form, then he's just some weird, lying, bearded freak guy. And Harry's like, oh, that's not a good thing at all. And Harry goes, no, it's not. And then Hera wanders off laughing. Time goes by, more months pass, and eventually Zeus shows up at the door. By this time, Semele has had months getting all grumpy and angry and unhappy. And when Zeus was on the other side, she opens it up and he goes, hey, I'm Zeus. 
Simile steps forward and just slaps him across the face. She's like, no! What'd you? She's like, you're not really Zeus! He's like, whoa, calm down. I'm really Zeus. I have the beard. And I said the words, I'm Zeus. She goes, you're not Zeus. You're just some weird old man with a beard. He's like, I am not. She goes, prove it! She's like, I, I don't have a driver's license. What do you want me to do? She goes, show me your true form. He goes, whoa, you don't want to see my true form. If you saw my true form, it would probably kill you. She's like, uh-huh. I've seen your true form. He goes, yeah. She goes, uh-huh. Your true form, it's a liar! And she starts getting in his face, snapping, starts happening, little head action going around. She's like, I've seen your true form. Your true form is you're just a big, ugly man with a big beard. You're just going to take a crap with me, and I hate you, and you're over. And he just starts yelling, and spittles flying, and just like, come on, get, what are you? And she just keeps yelling, and finally says, you know what? Fine. You want to see my true form? She goes, I've seen your true form. like, oh, you're going to see my true form. Boo! And goes into his true form right in front of her. She goes, ah! And turns into dust. Problem is, the baby that's inside of her is half God. So when she goes, the baby goes, ah! onto the ground. She's like, oh, snap! Uh, quickly runs over, picks up the baby, and is like, oh, no one's looking. So he pulls out his knife and plunges it into his own leg, cutting his leg open from the hip down to the kneecap. Rips his leg open, shoves the baby inside, wraps the leg back around it, thus bringing the baby to full turn in his leg. Months go by until it's time, he doesn't want the baby to die, he's full of love. And eventually it becomes time to give birth to the baby. And he gives birth to his very own leg baby. He's like, give birth in time, and out squeezes the little leg baby. He names this baby Dionysus. Leg baby. In Greek, Dionysus means two births, or technically born twice, because Dionysus is born two times. Once when his mom goes kapoopity, and once when his dad goes kasquishy. And Zeus loves his leg baby. He's like, I love my little leg baby. But the problem is, he has no more thrones to give to his little leg baby, which makes him all upset and sad. And he starts pouting around on Mount Olympus. He's like, I wish I had a throne, but no, all my other kids have thrones, my brothers and sisters, but not my little leg baby. And eventually, Hesha decides, you know what? He can have my throne. And Hesha gives up her throne so that Dionysus can get his own. Once Dionysus gets his throne, he sort of comes into his own. And his big claim to fame is he invents wine. And he's the one that comes up with wine and making it all important. The other thing he invents, by the way, is drama and theater. Because one of the big things about Dionysus is there's two sides to his personality. Because the whole two births and Dionysus means two sides. The Greeks thought that there were two sides to people. Your sober side and then your drunk side. And so the same thing happens why he became the creator of wine. Because when you drink wine, you're the sober side and the not sober side. So the god of two sides is the one that created it. Well, with that, the hand sign for Dionysus, almost every time we see him, he's doing the same thing. He's, yeah, tilting back the cup. Gurgle, gurgle. And so we'll do the same thing for Dionysus drinking from the cup. With Dionysus, he also helps create theater and drama. He was the one that came up with the idea of theater and plays. Because he came up with theater and plays, and he was the god of having two sides to a personality, there is a symbol of theater and plays. Two places, the happy and unhappy. Comes from him. That is supposed to represent Dionysus and the fact that there are two sides to Dionysus's personality: the happy side and the not so happy side. And so now, Dionysus is our last one to get. Did we get far enough? We got far enough. Oh, what a happy day.